Hi guys, it is a cloudy, gloomy Thursday morning, April 2nd, 2020, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on lockdown in Garfield, Texas. Um, uh, it's a gloomy morning, and my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot. Sancho Panza, and you are, despite what it says here, you are tuned into the Coronavirus Chronicles, uh, where your old <coughs> chronicler of the collapse of global industrial civilization has just pretty much abandoned talking about anything except the coronavirus because there's nothing on the planet to talk about anymore. It, it is now pretty much 100% of the news is about the coronavirus. And guys, I guess I have an apology to make. You know, for 10 years, this has been the, uh, the, the center of my attention is chronicling the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet and whatnot. And I have to admit, guys, I give myself an F uh, for calling this one. I still, I, I, I still am just absolutely flabbergasted what this has turned into. Uh, <clears throat> tr I truly am flabbergasted uh, how this uh, panic has taken on uh, a, an entire life of its own. How something, and here I go again, will I ever learn how something that I consider to be relative to everything I have been talking about, the absolute horrors that I have been talking about relative to those horrors that are coming right down the pike behind this one is a bad hair day. But apparently I miss, obviously, uh, I clearly underestimated the effects of panic on a global, uh, on a global population. Uh, it's just, it's just unbelievable how uh, what this has spiraled out of control, uh, obviously, while I am trying to sell a house. But anyway, uh, so guys, I am sitting here trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to zero in on today's chronicle of the collapse, and I do appreciate you guys uh, flooding my email box with your finally learning, guys, I, I do want to give you some credit that you're finally learning not to keep sending me articles about how many people might or might not die directly from the coronavirus. I really, I, I, I am getting you guys trained uh, not to talk about how many humans are going to die directly from the coronavirus, uh, which has nothing to do with anything about what I talk about here on uh, the coronavirus chronicles. So anyway, thank you all my Alert Tribes members. Keep those emails coming. And of course, the mainstream media. So this is what I am trying to decide between guys. So. I'm going to come back, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick out which one of these, if you were chronicling the collapse of global industrial civilization, which one of these stories uh, would uh, you go with? We're going to start here, right here in the great state of Texas from our old friend, uh, former Texas governor and energy secretary, former energy secretary, Rick Perry. What does Rick Perry have to say today about Corona panic? Quote, we are on the verge of a massive collapse. Thank you very much. As Perry says, the Corona panic will ravage 
the oil industry. Uh, former Energy Secretary Rick Perry believes that the oil industry could collapse because of the dramatic decrease in demand worldwide caused by the coronavirus outbreak and a steep decline in prices. Quote, I'm telling you, we are on the verge of a massive collapse of an industry that we worked awfully hard over the course of the last three or four years to build up to the number one oil and gas producing country in the world. Yes, say goodbye. And then, of course, right next to that story, Donald Trump to discuss aid for oil industry as first big shale firm files for bankruptcy. Take a wild guess uh, who is going to get more taxpayers' money, a hell of a lot more than any $1,200. That is the oil industry is getting your tax dollars uh, going out to bail out the frackers. Thank you, Donald Trump, for keeping the economy afloat. Well, I don't know, guys. Sancho Panza sent me this article. <laughs> China's Shenzhen <coughs> bans the eating of cats and dogs after coronavirus. There you go. So the Chinese, the dogs and cats can breathe a little bit easier uh, in China today, at least in the city of Shenzhen, where restaurants are no longer allowed to serve dog and cat on the menu, but you can still eat both frogs and turtles. Uh, in Shenzhen, there was some big freak out whether uh, frogs were going to be banned from restaurant menus or turtles. Good news, if you had a hankering for, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, y y you know, Sancho Panza, uh, Mushu Sancho, uh, can't get Mushu Sancho today, but you can get Mushu Frog. All right. The good old New York Times explaining this to us this morning. Why the global recession could last a long time. <coughs> Excuse this dry cough. <coughs> the world is almost certainly in <coughs> ensnared in a devastating recession delivered by the coronavirus pandemic panic. Now, fears, meaning panic, fears are growing that the downturn could be far more punishing and long-lasting than initially feared, potentially enduring into next year and even beyond as governments intensify restrictions on business to halt the spread of the pandemic and as fear of the virus reconfigures the very concepts of public space impending consumer impeding consumer-led economic growth. So long as human interaction remains dangerous, business cannot responsibly return to normal, and what was normal before may not be any more. People may be less inclined to jam into crowded restaurants and concert halls even after this virus is contained. The abrupt halt of commercial activity threatens to impose economic pain so profound and so enduring in every region of the world at once that recovery could take years. The losses to companies, many already saturated with debt, risk 
triggering a financial crisis of cataclysmic proportions. Thank you, New York Times. Okay. What are the economists? Here is one economist, quote, the economy has fallen into the abyss. <coughs> this is Chris Rutke, uh, managing director and chief financial economist at some place called MUFG, whatever that means. Net job layoffs are so soaring faster than any time in recorded history. I think we're now up to over 6.6 .6 million people applying for unemployment this week, including this nice young couple who uh, was here a couple of days ago trying to buy my house. Uh, this 6.6 .6 million is a sign of the times to come. All right, so this is what economist Chris Rupke has to say. Net job layoffs are soaring faster than any time in recorded history. This looks bad and it is bad. The worst jobless claims in U.S. history means our economy has fallen into the abyss. All right. All right, what is foreign affairs? Branko Milanovic from Foreign Affairs. <coughs> the real pandemic danger is social collapse as the global economy comes apart societies may too so i think we're going to come back what do you think guys so far this is the winner i think i'm going to come back and do a separate full coronavirus we're going to come back to this one but let's see what else we have here here is averting a total collapse Good luck on that. <laughs> I did enjoy this one from the Los Angeles Times. Bunker <coughs> with a bowling alley. <coughs> How the rich are running from coronavirus. So how are the one percenters reacting today? <coughs> Hand sanitizer? Sure. Face masks? Fine. But as the corona panic spreads, the rich are investing in a much more extreme way to ward off the disease. Bunkers. Inquiries and sales are skyrocketing for bunkers and shelters across the country. Most come equipped with special air filtration systems which buyers believe will come in handy to keep out the virus, uh-huh. And for those fearing, panicking over a broader societal collapse down the road, a secure, safe room with a year's worth of food can provide peace of mind. Yes. Uh, bunkers are nothing new, but with this new virus fueling social anxiety, can you say panic, manufacturers are pumping out safe spaces with amenities usually reserved for mega mansions. Yes, this is Gary Lynch, general manager of good old Texas-based Rising S Bunkers. I wonder what the S in Rising S stands for. Uh, quote, <clears throat> quoting the general manager of a bunker company, quote, as, pop, as unpopular as coronavirus is, it is getting the publicity of a Backstreet Boys hit 
in the 90s, people have an infatuation with it. Yes, an infatuation uh, with the coronavirus. What are the socialists from the World Socialist website? What's on their minds today? <clears throat> Hunger increased by quarantines leads to protests across Latin America. Roadblocks, raids of supermarkets, and mass quarantine violations by desperate workers forced to work and find food are now spreading across the poorest neighborhoods of Latin America, where the official response to the corona panic has focused on police state measures and pushed the region to the brink of open dictatorship. Yes. <clears throat> As the panic spreads to every corner of the world, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization warned of potential food shortages from supply chain disruptions caused by decline of seasonal migrants, trade barriers, sanctions, and currency uh, fluctuations. Uh, after weeks of roadblocks protesting water shortages hampering their protection against the coronavirus panic, entire communities across Honduras, for instance, are now taking to the streets to protest the lack of food and income due to the measures taken there to contain the outbreak. Uh, <clears throat> a national and absolute curfew imposed on March 16th in Honduras has left hundreds of thousands of people with no income and led to shortages in staple goods. That's what's going on in Honduras. But uh, let's end up this roundup here in the good old New York Times. When humans are sheltered in place, wild animals will play. Yes, they will. Goats in Wales, coyotes in San Francisco, and rats, rats everywhere. With much of the world staying home to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, animals have ventured out where normally the presence of people would keep them away. There you go. <clears throat> Luckily for the goats, there are not many humans around anymore. <laughs> Thank you, New York Times, for uh, pointing out that uh, why Chernobyl, why uh, the Chernobyl human exclusion zone, uh, I always point out is my one ray of hope, uh, the biggest ray of hope I can find on the planet, on planet Earth, is the Chernobyl human exclusion zone but uh, apparently we're getting more and more human exclusion zones on the planet so every other of our fellow earthlings can come out and celebrate and get back to being an animal without having to worry about being shot run over poisoned uh, whatever, by humans. But anyway, I'm going to come back uh, with a second Coronavirus Chronicles story today since I have no Collapse Chronicles story since I cannot find one article on uh, the mainstream media that the environmental news about 
the collapse of this planet has been completely eradicated completely eradicated environmental news about the real threats to this planet uh, are not just on the back burner anymore they are nowhere in the kitchen uh, as the entire planet uh, is is just completely hypnotized by this one story anyway uh, coming back in one minute bye guys